Person in accompanied by the National Political Commissioner. I'm sorry, I was in a hurry. Uh, the spokesperson will give you uh, a special uh, briefing following what happened in April, which I'm sure by now you are all aware. Among other things, the National Political Commissioner, Comrade Bima, will give his, his remarks after the spokesperson has spoken to you. I had, I had, I will introduce him. It's okay. So thank you very much. You are all welcome and it's good to see you standing on your feet. Welcome and uh, over to you, uh, our spokesperson, Comrade Chris Mchonga. The occasion is yours. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you, Director Mgwadi. I made sure that you are here by my side oh. <laughs> because uh, they've got a tendency of creating news about you, <laughs> fake news about you. Uh, you can see that he enjoys my full confidence and got the trust of the two political polit bureau members who are here and the whole polit bureau we represent and the party as well as our president. We are here today uh, primarily uh, to thank you the press for the coverage which you gave us during the most successful rally of the campaign election which we have just launched uh, on Saturday in April. Uh, we are also very thankful of the men behind that event and he is our national political commissar. We have always told you that uh, ZAN, ZANU PF is a party of which is, it takes the Zimbabwean electorate seriously, it takes its membership serious, and it takes Zimbabweans in general very, very seriously. So uh, when we get a, a response in kind from the population of Zimbabwe, as was shown on Saturday, we naturally want to thank uh, the people of Epworth, we want to thank the leadership in Epworth, and we want to thank the Zimbabwean populace in general for the demonstration of support which was evinced during the rally in Epworth. We also want to thank our president for a clear-cut message about the economic direction which Zimbabwe is taking. We also want to thank him for the show of unity where he was with all his top leadership at the rally. Uh, in contrast to other parties where, you know, fishing is the deed in fashion. <laughs> Ours was, uh, the full leadership was there in support of the president in addressing that meeting. But my colleague has got uh, some announcements, some gripes, uh, Comrade Bima, about the way our party members have been handled elsewhere because people are getting frustrated by the fact that I mean, small opposition parties are getting frustrated by the amount, by the show of support. So they, they, their reaction has been sulking violence, 
against our members <coughs> in some constituencies as we campaign for this election. We are a part of peace. We are a part of democracy. We brought democracy to Zimbabwe. We want this election to be peaceful and we appeal to everybody to constrain themselves, to restrain themselves, and if there are issues, they go to the police rather than to take matters into their hands. So Comrade Bima has got uh, one or two things to say about this particular topic. Comrade Bima, your, sh your turn. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade uh, Mchangwa, our party spokesperson. Uh, I also want to recognize Comrade Mugwadi, the director in the Department of Information and Publicity, and also to, to welcome you all. As uh, Comrade Mchangwa indicated, we, we had a successful launch of our campaign rally in Epworth on Saturday, which was well attended. But I think more importantly was the discipline that was displayed by those who attended. There was no report of any incident at the rally or even after the rally. And that is what we would want to see, that meetings are held campaigns are, are conducted and there are no incidents of violence. And ZANU-PF doesn't condone any, any violence of any sort. And uh, it is surprising and, and what a big contrast that after a successful rally in Epworth here in Harare, that this morning we had our members attacked in Jube, in Mulawai. After the launch in Epworth, in most of our provinces, they did set up campaigning teams, campaigning teams at provincial level, campaign teams at various levels in terms of our structures. So this morning, we had campaigning teams who were going around doing their business, and we have been informed that they were then attacked by members of the oppositions. They were attacked by way of people throwing stones, and others using catapults. There have been several cases of injuries as a result of that. A few minutes ago, I was in touch with one of our officials in Blawayo, and they did tell me that they were on their way to the hospital so that they could give us an accurate report on how many people have been injured and the severity of those injuries. And as I said earlier on, it disheartens that when you have people who are just carrying out their business peacefully and then they are disrupted by violent mobs disrupting their activities. We are still to wait to get the accurate figures, as I said earlier on, but I thought it's, a, it's an issue that is of, of importance to us that such incidents are coming out after His Excellency the President really appealed for peaceful campaigning on Saturday. And I'm sure those responsible will be treated accordingly. 
I thought party spokesperson, I should just make mention of this incident that has happened this morning in Juve, in Mulawai. I thank you. I, I'm, I've been advised as well that this case has been reported to the police and police are doing their work in terms of making investigations and I'm sure we should be getting a report within an hour's time in terms of what's happening there as well as the condition of those who have been injured. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Comrade National PC. I don't know whether there are any questions, but he, you know, he's following, he's seized with that matter. is also a full plate on his, on, in his hands. So I don't want to hold him any longer than is necessary. So I'll give you a chance to ask him if you please do. Um, my name is Jesse Plank, HSTV. Jesse, members of the opposition, uh, you came uh, to explain which opposition uh, party is responsible for. They, 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 as I said, when you talk of, of opposition, you are talking of anyone who is opposed to ZANU-PF. These were ZANU-PF members carrying out their campaigning business, and I want to assume that whoever attacked them opposes what they are trying to achieve. But I would know which political party they represented, and I'm sure such details will come out after the investigations by the police as well as our security personnel in Bulawayo. Thank you. Another question? Thank, Thank you, you very much, Party Spokesperson. Thank you very much. You are free to go. Thank you. So, there it is, members of the press. We are uh, exposing this case of violence quite early on in the elections for the in the by elections, the mini by the mini national election by elections going on right now. We are appealing to all responsible political parties to desist from violence on the part of ZANU-PF. We want to promote, to promise you and to promote a very clean election uh, exactly in the manner of the behavior of our supporters, which you saw in Epworth. There was a big crowd in Epworth. Uh, it actually showed ZANU-PF coming back to the urban areas. We told you that the president has, got an, uh, has launched a, a program of urban renewal for the people of Zimbabwe as a follow-up to his very successful rural policies, which have restored policy, uh, prosperity to uh, the, the urban populace, um, to the rural populace, from Vodza, you know, irrigation for rural people, the building of access roads, devolution, all these things are uh, bring palpable prosperity to rural people. He said that he felt it was important that in Zimbabwe nobody is left behind, it is important that the urban people should also be part of this march to prosperity. And the rally in Epworth was a launch of this urban prosperity program, the urban renewal program of the president, President Idim Nangagwa, uh, for the people of Zimbabwe. Uh, he covered a lot of areas uh, during his address. Uh, the main thing being that ZANU-PF he has resorted to presidential powers as a method of overcoming the ineptitude which is characteristic of the MDC as an administrator of our major towns since two decades ago. Uh, Harare is a major city with budgets sometimes overtaking some African countries. At one time we were bigger than Malawi in Harare alone. If the MDC had any credence as a part of governance with such a huge budget, 
with such a huge responsibility to one of the major and most loved cities of, the, of Africa, Harare, it would have shown in the last 20, 20 years that it can administer a city to the standards which the ratepayers expect of it. Alas, there has been none of that. You all come from sewage ponds. You all come from uh, port roads. You all drive through port roads on your way here. There is no urban transport. There are no jobs. Uh, garbage is not collected. This is the MDC at its best. Now, that MDC is the party which now says it wants to go to State House. Charity begins at home. It just a few days ago, they were saying they are promising universal education <laughs> to the people of Zimbabwe. Can you please start by collecting garbage so that the people can know that their children can go to school without being menaced by typhoid or cholera? Can you please have running water so that those children, before you promise them universal education, can avoid drinking infested water? Can you please start by having the parents go to school in decent roads so that their children can drive to school knowing that they, are, they, they, they have got a caring council? All that is non-existent. To expect anything from the MDC on a national level when they are failing so dismally at local government level, they had a chance and they showed that they are incompetent, they don't care, they only care for one thing, which is uh, power at State House. And when State House, which is the central government, begins to address those issues, they adopt a narcissist agenda. Please, because the means you are being negative. This is the part of negativity. So these are the issues which the president highlighted that when we are going to these elections, the electorate in the urban areas must make a comparison. Who is beginning to fix your roads? That's the person who cares about you. Who has taken Pumvuza to the urban areas so that they can also use the scientific method of farming in urban areas? Because the plots don't have to be big. That is an PF. And you know, there's now you know, a, a, a food sufficiency even in urban areas. We are even now, you know, it was a big announcement. We have joined the World Food Program in supplying food to, to, to Mozambique, which has been stricken by Cyclone Anna. This, is, this was unthinkable. Zimbabwe was always seen as a basket case. But under the Second Republic of President Mnangagwa, we have turned the, the agricultural sector around and we are making this country a breadbasket and we are already ready to play our role as a food surplus nation with the international board, which is the United Nations, through their various charity programs, starting with our neighbor, Mozambique. This is the new republic of President E.D. Mnangagwa. We also covered during the, the, the rally the direction which our economy is going at regional level. He is a busy man. He is working 25 hours a day. He had just come back to Mozambique where we are forging alliances, economic alliances with our neighbor Mozambique, because we are two countries which are joined at the hip, Zimbabwe and Mozambique. We are a landlocked country. We now want Mozambique to help us become a land-linked country where we use our mineral resources, they use their energy resources in a symbiotic relationship with Mozambique so that we attract capital at a global level so that we can use the resources to ply our way into the international economy. This is what President Mnangagwa is doing. He's not cringing about sanctions from the Americans. No, he's not cringing about sanctions from the EU. He is taking pro proactive steps to make sure that this economy grows, notwithstanding the American sanctions. And it is, it is growing, this economy. 5.2% according to a taciturn World Bank, Bretton Woods, IMF institution, but 7.8%. But he's going further, our president. We're 7.8% according to our bank, resource, our national bank and our Minister of Finance. But he's taken the, the economic management further. We want to harness the lantern energy of the urban population into this bandwagon of economic prosperity. So he announced the issuing of title deeds. 
When we said it with Mgwadi a few weeks ago, people said it was a gimmick. <laughs> now you have heard it from the horse's mouth. The president himself announced that he will be issuing title deeds. And he, will be, he said that it will be an exception not to be granted a title deed if you've got a piece of urban property. And the only exception is if your house is on a planned road or on a wetland or a similar planning impediment. Then you cannot get a title deed. But in the event there is contingents that we are going to start building plants, you have heard that Minister Gary was talking about Shelter Africa setting up headquarters in Zimbabwe. There will be apartments for those people who cannot be accommodated on title deeds. This is the reality. I want to tell you that had it not been for the fact that Quilia beds are being scouted by our space agents, we would be having the scientists from our national space agents sitting by my side, giving you the program of how far they have done with their special planning from space as well as drones to get to make sure that people get the physical addresses which will be the basis of title deeds. This is reality. Don't be fooled that it's a gimmick. Last time we said we were distributing land in this country as the part of the revolution. The MDC said it is a gimmick. <laughs> 20 years later, everybody in the MDC is looking for a piece of land. <laughs> ZANU-PF, what it says, it does. We said we are going to give you independence. In 1980, we gave it. We said we'll make you sure that Zimbabwe is the most educated country in Africa when we were fighting the war. Yes, today we are the most educated country in Africa. We said we'll set up a military structure which will defeat the foremost empire of or the, at Ketspo, the Rhodesian Ketspo of the British Empire. We said we'll set up a, a, a military complex, a, a military machinery to do that, and Zanla and Zipra actually did that. So please, when ZANU-PF says that it is going to do something, take it seriously. It will deliver. Yes, we had our mishaps during the last two decades of the second or the first republic, but you saw, you also saw what we could do. Many, many, many years, the MDC tried to remove Mugabe from power. That was their purpose for two decades. They failed. ZANU-PF decided that Mugabe must go. <laughs> <laughs> and yours truly was part of that arrangement. Mugabe went. This is what he had. This, you got to take what ZANU PF says seriously, more so with our president, Comrade Emerson Damuzom Nangagwa. He is serious about the revival of the Zimbabwe economy. So, at micro level, we are busy linking up with Mozambique. We will become a major steel producer. They will supply us with gas from Buzi where the river Buzi meets the Rimpopo near Baira, there is a huge gas find. So we are going to be supplying green compliant power from the gas fields in, in Buzi to power, uh, to, to, to energize the, the, the steel sector and the chrome sector and the metallurgical sector of Zimbabwe. This means growth at a level which when you combine with the title deeds for urban areas, who notch double digit growth, this economy is going to pump, believe you me. That is the reason why the president is also defending the Zimbabwe dollar. There is a lot of debate. People have nostalgia to the false claims by BT that he fixed uh, the inflation when he was the Minister of Finance, when, when, when it was the GNU. To the contrary, Zanupi have just said that our currency is weak, it is under attack. Let's use the Zimbabwe, the US dollar, to fend off that attack. But now with the Second Republic, because it's pro-business, the economy is growing. Agriculture is doing well. Businesses are bullish. Foreign direct investment is coming in droves. People, you know, big companies, even Fortune 500 companies, are coming into Zimbabwe to invest in Zimbabwe. So the supply side of our economy is being fixed. It means we are beginning first to save on the importation of food and other things which we can grow at home. We are saving on U.S. dollars. It means our pile of U.S. dollars is growing. But more important, by growing our exports in coking coal, in, 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 in diamonds, in gold, which we are producing in huge amounts, in ferrochrome, 
It means we are also earning U.S. dollars from the global market. It means, again, our dollar pile is growing. But also by attracting investments at the scale like the Mvuma Manize steel plant and what's happening in Mzarabani, it means we are getting huge U.S. dollars being pumped into the economy by world-class investors. It means, again, our dollar pile, U.S. dollar pile, is, is building up. So it means our currents can be supported because there is a, a growing surplus of U.S. dollars in our economy. In that instance, we must use the advantage that we have a national currency which is competitive on the global markets. If you grow, if you run your economy in U.S. dollars, then it is the American Federal Bank which decides on the mark sheet of your performance. As a proud nation with competent people, organized uh, so, so, uh, nation with also a lot of resources, we cannot allow the Federal Reserve Bank of America to be the master of our currency in Zimbabwe. So the president is right. The central bank is right. Those who are in the MDC who are trying to use the teachers to say that we must make Zimbabwe dollar our currency, they are wrong and the history will judge them wrongly. I repeat what I said last time. The MDC always destroys the unions. They destroyed the labor unions by sanctions because factories closed. And without closed factories, there are no workers. So if there are no workers, there is no ZCTU. In the meantime, the government is paying teachers. So the, the teachers are organized. So the MDC now follows with its trail of destruction to the next productive center, which is the teaching profession, and wants them to be the basis of destabilization of the country. Why don't you fix? Why didn't you call for uh, sanctions to be exempt to the cities where you are administrators so that Americans would have supported the economy of the towns where the MDC was in charge? No, the Americans didn't do that. The MDC didn't call do that. So they destroyed the economy of the towns. They destroyed their basis of, as, a, as a party, their basis of support. That's why ZANU-PF is now harvesting the urban vote. And I can assure you that come elections on 26, people, 26 March, our people will vote. And when they vote this time, the MDC will be consigned to the dustbin of history. We say to the MDC, incidentally, like Chebundo said, the party has been destroyed by Chamisa. Can you imagine the proud tradition of Morgan Changrai as a fighter of democracy? There are many things which we are not happy with, but it's because Zanupi have not wafa, out of the and Munafa. We look at his positive side. He fought valiantly for democracy and we against the authoritarian tendencies of Mugabe. We were with Morgan Changrai when we big, did the big demonstration in 2017. I personally engaged Morgan Changrai when he was in South Africa and we bonded so well. I was doing it on behalf of President Mnangagwa, who was then the Vice President of the Republic, as we tried to build a coalition against the G40. So he is a national institution, Morgan Changrai, and his party, MDC, equally a beacon of the fight of Zimbabweans for what is just and what is democratic. Now, that name disappears in history. Changrai is gone. He is replaced by Nelson Chamisa. Chete, chete, chete. That's what he's replaced with. And that name, MDC, is gone too. Finished. Just like that. Can you imagine? And on top of it, what does uh, Nelson say? Although he wants to ride on the laurels of the party, he wants also to, to, to dissociate himself from the mess which the urban areas are. A, President EDM has been in charge for only three years, since 2017. Look at the dramatic changes which he has done. We, if ZANU-PF, feel, feel proud. We didn't say ZANU-PF is a part of Mugabe, so we, we changed the name. We, no, no, no. We say ZANU-PF is the proud tradition of the people of Zimbabwe as a, as, as a, as a, as a nationalistic and patriotic people. We retain that name. Changrai's name is gone. The MDC name is gone. Chete, 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 chacha misa is taken over. He has destroyed the party. Now, how can people who feel that they fought for MDC identify with a party which actually destroys their, their roots, their tradition? Chebundo was right. He was the founder member of the MDC. 
he was lamenting the death of his party at that rally. And we in ZANPF, we welcome all good intentioned Zimbabweans to come and build a united force against Chete Chete Chete, because Chete Chete means nothing to the Zimbabwe people. So, by and large, we are here to thank the ZANU-PF uh, party for the marvelous organization which went on at, Kwekwe, at, at, at Epworth during the elections. I'm getting confused with my Chebundo. It was a wonderful occasion of uh, people of Kamaradeni. We are thankful of the leadership of ZANU-PF. Most important, we are very proud of the leadership which was paraded by the president to be the front runners of our election come 26 March. All dedicated Zimbabweans who mean well for the electorate of Zimbabwe, in particular the urban constituents, which has become a stragglers. They are, they are lagging behind in the economic prosperity which the president is creating and the president is addressing it. We are very confident that the urban electorate will respond in kind on 26 March because we are determined to make urban cities as the shining beacons of Zimbabwe where foreigners come in when they arrive here. We want them to be an example for Africa, the urban centers of Zimbabwe. Our leadership, original leadership in ZANU-PF in the 1960s, 1950s, came from urban areas. This nationalist movement came from urban areas. We see this is our home. ZANU-PF has come back home to the urban areas. And we are going to displace the sanctions-loving MDC which does not, which is an indiscriminate weapon called sanctions. Even when the administrators, when they are in charge, sanctions hit them. They hit urban areas even worse than rural areas. And still the MD supports those sanctions. Now the electorate must vote this party out of power, and that's what our president appealed to the electorate. Vote the incompetence out of power on 26 March, and it's going to happen. I thank you. Ah, God is very good. He's just reminding me that finally Charlton Wendy accepted that MDC councillors are accountable for the urban mess. You know, he was debating with Chumono. They were talking, making some exchanges. So, well, bravo, Charlton Wendy, finally for admitting for your incompetence. Can you go and say it as it is to the electorate that your councillors are incompetent? And perhaps go a little further and in, in campaign for a party which is beginning to change the urban face by building roads, by building, supplying water, by building dams, by building pipes to give running water in urban areas. He admitted it, that if you are elected on a ticket of improving urban life and you don't do your job, then you're accountable. Don't blame July Moy for not cleaning your bag, your, 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 your. Your, 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 your garbage in your what? Don't blame July Moyo, the Minister of Local Government, for not fixing potholes which are next to you. Don't, 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 these are not July. You have a budget. You are collecting money from the... They've just raised the budget, I mean, the, the rates for four, by 400%. That is their job, to make sure that that money is... Up. No, they use it for corruption. They use it for, for self-enrichment. This is what the urban electorate will vote against on 26 March, and they will make those who are responsible for the urban mess, for the cesspits which have become our towns, they will make them accountable on the 26th of, of, of March. And that was the message, central message of our president, and definitely we will also harness the power of title deeds to create credit for urban people so that they can begin to get money for, out of this dead capital, and out of this money, they will begin to improve at their own level, at individual level, the condition of their lives. So the government is coming from the top and the population is coming from the, from, from the bottom. We will meet somewhere and we will create very dynamic urban centers for Zimbabwe. We will promise them, we will deliver them. I told you ZANU-PF does what? Whatever it says, it delivers. Particularly the ZANU-PF of the Second Republic of President E.D. Munangago. He is a doer, he works hard, he has been on this as a young man since the 1960s, he has been lucky to survive this, 
he has gone to war twice. No, no, not many people can claim that war is scary if you survive once, even if you are in jail. You don't go back to it. He went back to the war the second time in the 70s to meet our generation, the bigger generation, and finally to lead us you know, into victory, military victory. Today, with all his patience, forbearance of Anna Grace, Gucci Grace, and uh, uh, people's rallies, he has ended up at the helm of power. So he is somebody who is harnessing, is mining a life of commitment to the people of Zimbabwe in every aspect. He is now in charge of the reins of power and is determined to fulfill the dream of prosperity which made so many of the Zimbabweans die in the 60s and 70s. He knows them. He knows it. And we are there as the part of revolution to deliver prosperity to Zimbabwe. This is what we stand for. Nothing else deliver prosperity. I want to thank you. Thank Once you again. very much, uh, uh, Comrade Spokesperson, for such a very brief but uh, powerful uh, <coughs> remarks on uh, exactly the game-changing rally that took place on the 12th of February in Epworth. Thank you very much, uh, our comrades. Uh, maybe before I just uh, invite questions, I can see that my friend, blessed, is anchoring to probe and engage with the spokesperson is one of our colleagues here. That's we missed you quite a few days ago when you were no longer coming. I hope all is well at AMH. We have a succession plan in Ah, thank you. Uh, the spokesperson will probably have to share with you in brief uh, the issue involving racial profiling of foreign investors. Oh, yes. Yeah, we have, we have noticed of late uh, through the crisis coalition of Zimbabwe an effort at trying to divide our investors. We argue at ZANU-PF that Zimbabwe is open for business. An investment dollar is an investment dollar regardless of the country from which it comes from, regardless of the racial profile from the person who has invested it. There is no distinction between a power station in the generation of electricity, whether it was built by the Americans or by the Chinese or by the French. <laughs> the electricity which comes out is the same, <laughs> out of a power station. True. So we do not, as a party, distinguish the origins of investment. All we want is that the investment is for the good of Zimbabwe. Yes. Secondly, the people who the people who come to invest in Zimbabwe, the companies who come, they register companies in Zimbabwe under the laws of Zimbabwe. So those companies are corporate citizens of Zimbabwe. The moment they are in Zimbabwe, they become citizens like anybody else, and they are protected by the Zimbabwe law. Equally, if they fall foul of the Zimbabwe law, they will be taken to the courts by the authorities in Zimbabwe, and the Zimbabwe courts will make a ruling on any foul behavior. But what we have seen of late is because Western companies which championed sanctions are beginning to lose out to the new investors, there is an attempt now to use NGOs as an avenue to make up for their deficit, for their incapacity to compete in the investment marketplace. That's not right. Those companies which feel that they are good at what they are doing and they don't like, and they feel they can compete with investment from citizens of another country, they should just put their dollar on the table and make their investment decisions so that they are proven in their balance sheets. So, crisis coalition in Zimbabwe, which used to persecute ZANU PF and has failed to dislodge ZANU PF, has now turned and spiked its guns against Chinese investors coming into Zimbabwe. Today it's Chinese investors. Tomorrow it will be Indian. Next day it will be Turkish investors. The next time it will be all Asian investors. Next time it will be more... You want to make this country a racial country simply because you want to protect the, the British tradition? If the British can't compete, it's their problem. It's not our problem. 
We are happy to bring, get British money here if it can invest. There are 400 British companies in this country. We have never castigated them for being in Zimbabwe. Even with their history of being former colonial companies, we have never castigated them because in Zimbabwe, capital is the same. So we want to say to crisis coalition of Zimbabwe, desist forthwith from trying to profile investment. It's not proper. If your, your sponsor, Mr. George Soros, of the Open Society Institute of Southern Africa, who thinks he's that he's a world-class businessman, if he thinks he's up to his job, let him put his money in Zimbabwe and build power stations. Let him build railways. Let him build roads. Let him build, put money in mines. Let him not go to the NGOs to use them as a front for the fact that his exploitative agenda on Zimbabwe has been thwarted. He sees himself as a latter day sister John Rhodes exploiting this country. This won't happen under the watch of ZANU PF. Definitely it won't happen under the watch of uh, President E. Dim Nangagwa. George Soros and your crisis coalition in Zimbabwe can go hang. This country will attract investment from whoever wants the resources of this country, wants the labor of this country, wants the organization and stability which ZANU PF is proffering, wants the leadership, the forward-looking leadership and pro-business policies of President Mnangagwa. That's what we are there to sell. We are not there to entertain any nonsense about companies being pilloried because of the country of their origin. We will not accept that. And crisis coalition of Zimbabwe must desist forthwith. That's why we, the war veterans, who have always been at the forefront of guarding, for safeguarding the interests of Zimbabwe, have issued a statement against them. We have a new investment vehicle called the New Vista investment uh, uh, company. We are ready to use that company to canvas for investments from all the company, world, country, companies of the world, regardless of origin. But more important, we shall be there to call out crisis coalition as it tries to organize against investment in Zimbabwe. Each time they make a false call, we will be there to expose them. If need be, we will take them to the courts, who we'll take them to the Competition Commission, who we'll take them to the Human Rights Commission, who we'll take them to every constitutional avenue which exists in this country to protect the fairness of the investment climate of Zimbabwe. We will not allow them what they have done in the political arena. We will not allow them to do it in the investment arena because they see that President Mnangagwa has circumvented sanctions by offsetting the premium against investment caused by sanctions, he has actually put a big advantage on the side of those people who want to invest in this, in this country because he is making sanctions now by making sure that investment gets rewards in Zimbabwe. Sanctions dis removes rewards from investors. President Mnangagwa is making sure that pro-business, Zimbabwe is open for business, and rewards investors. So we are offsetting, we are being competitive on the investment climate, we are defeating sanctions at their own game. This is what is biting the George Soros and their crisis coalitions of this world. The other aspect which we want to bring in related to it, we always tell you ZANU-PF is a part of organization. To defeat the British, we have to set up the best organization in Africa, in rural areas. That's why we defeat, that's why when that blessing Shumba says Musanga Nukuma sell, that's what it means. It means organization from the basic level upwards. In Zimbabwe, a foreigner will not spend two day, one day in a rural area if they don't know who you are. They report you to CIO, to our intelligence services. In other African countries, it doesn't happen. This is because of the war. People in rural areas are structured, they are organized. This is the population which we have. MDC does not have equal structures like that because this is a party of chances. CCC does not have organizational capacity like that. Now, because we have exposed them that the, the emperor has no organizational clothes, <laughs> what has happened? The NGOs now want to move in as a substitute for the, for, for, for the, for, for the opposition parties. No, 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 no. In, in, we are an NGO, don't get into political party, into, into political territory. Undercover of all sorts of things, they want to become a substitute of a, a, a failing MTC. If they are so good, why can't they be NGOs making sure that Harare is water? <laughs>
<laughs> Why can't there be NGOs making sure that Harare is no potholes? Why can't there be NGOs making sure that garbage is collected in Harare? Everything which shows responsibility NGOs don't want, but they sell this mirage, human rights, human rights, as if human rights are eaten. Democracy, democracy, as if democracy. Democracy is what we fought for. We can't be taught by NGOs. So this is another aspect about NGOs. They should keep away from the political arena. The contest for the coming elections is between political parties and political parties only, not NGOs. They cannot be a substitute for an competent Chamisa. They cannot be a substitute for neutered uh, KMDC candidates. No, NGOs must keep out. And that new legislation coming to Parliament regulating the activities, we are very happy with it. In Zimbabwe, there seem to be an NGO for every member of the Zimbabwe population. Mm -hmm. Per capita, we are the country with the highest number of NGOs in the whole world. Can you imagine? 16 million people have more NGOs than China has, than India has, than even probably America has. Why? So we know their game and we call them out. They want, no, they want to influence, they, want, they are agents of regime change. They want a government which they, do, which they would like. That's why when the MDC fails, they want to become substitute for the MDC. When the C fails, they want to be a substitute. Instantly, you're TCCC. You know, I'm, I'm a farmer in, 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 in Mashona and West. As I drive every time I pass the, 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 the toll gate there in Norton, there is a company to my left called the C. It rears pigs. So I think this triple C is real ripe for a bride somewhere for America. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> triple C, we want them for a bride. This is a, the, 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 the. And I'm also very persuaded that as title deeds are dished out by the president, we swap title deeds for yellow t-shirts from the MDC. We want to see somebody who will retain a, a yellow t-shirt when ZANU-PF is offering a, a title deed in exchange. Mm -hmm. So we shall be dishing title deeds in exchange for yellow t-shirts. Mm -hmm. I think we zanu will end up with a mountain, a mountain of yellow tickets because title deeds are forever. You know the white people who occupied Harare in, in Bulawayo in 1890? They left their sons in title deeds. That's why the white population is still here. They are waving title deeds from 1890. Now ZANU-PF is doing the same thing with, with, with the, the, the urban population. Something written by will. The title deed, the Yangu ku Grenora, the Yangu ku New Caledonia. This is something which Zimbabwean voters in urban areas can only be proud of. That now, Maguchin, Maguchin, get that. Zinzari no bata na kanari ne charaga sir wane waka pura kudara anana sekur. Now or gundo runo wane wane ngoi ne mache dru dit. Ah, zan pia fya kana kwa koma na ini 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 even then get that say I would join that party without even a wins, and I would definitely would not go for the rajesh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Foxes, and I think it was so powerful. I can see the dedicated listening, the dedicated audience from our colleagues in the, in the media. It is my hope that our issues will be represented so well, like so well you have spoken, Comrade Foxes. George Soros, I think the message was very clear. Very, very clear. I saw Comrade Mchango, you had won your campus from the war. Mm. That goes on to say, don't provoke war veterans by engaging in the various activities, thinking you can outsmart them, you can't. Uh, blessed and colleagues, any questions? Depending desire for, for questions, comrades, feel free on anything. Uh, I do get a lot of questions from your newspaper, Newsday. Mm -hmm. Ah, Kwa Mtoko, Pane Wane Zanu PF. Kucholocho, Kunevan Varoa, and Varoa and Zanu PF. Ah, you know, I say to, to the journalists from your stable, look, it's good to write stories, but citizens never stop quarreling among each other for it. And if one of the citizens then says, Ipati Akati, until the matter has been taken to the police, I can't then be commenting all the time on those issues. 
because I'll comment on every petty quarrel which goes on in, in, among the Zimbabwean populace. So let's not take the role of the police as being the arbiter of frustrations or, or, or skirmishes among the populace. True. Let's use the police like we have just, just done. We have told our people in Blawai, go to the police, get medical reports, so that the institution, the constitutional statutory body which deals with conflict resolution in society, the police, is given its job to look and examine facts. Then afterwards they can go to the courts and the courts can make a ruling. But we can't really be commenting as a party on every petty thing which your journalists find in somebody's phones. So sometimes these questions are coming from algorithms from the, from the internet. Hey, you, know, you know, the Americans, they use algorithms to generate audience which don't exist. So they can just say to a journalist, something has happened, and can you ask ZANU PF? No, it has not been reported to the police. So I think, you know, it behoves on the journalists, on the reporters that, yes, you may not like ZANU PF a lot, but try to give it a, the chance of being adjudicated by the systems of the state, which have a responsibility for that. Then I can come in as the spokesman of the party, once the matter has gone through its proper channels, then I can say, Kanawari and Wedu, I condemn them for misbehavior, or we constrain them, Kanawari Wedu. But just to be all, don't want to comment, pese pese comment, ah, no, no, please, let's be serious. You take your profession seriously, you can see by the amount of talking I'm doing that I take what I'm doing also seriously. <laughs> so, Yes. So <laughs> let's, let's, let's respect each other. Thank you, blessed. Anzi, Kalamuna Gafeka, Zelo, Sakaga, or Mushuma, Katagarmo, and the Gaji Bokshi guy. I could now for another spokesperson with two of them. In the police. Thank you, blessed. Proceed. Then I'll come to you, my brother. I saw your hand was up. Okay. So. <laughs> Some, some have said that um, same allegations you put uh, against the MTC, uh, which you say is dead in the um, that you failed to manage the economy uh, for over 40 years. Uh, national institutions like ZESA, like NRS, you folded uh, under your watch, uh, but you're quick to talk about suit. What would be your defense with that? And the second question that I have is, um, I'll start by answering the last question. Uh, I alluded earlier on to the fact that our president, our central bank, and our minister of finance are saying no country develops without its own currency. This is very important. Because if you develop with the currency of another country, they will harvest what you have worked hard for and put it in the federal bank in New York. I'm a finance man by every dollar, US dollar, is a serial number. Each time you transact and it goes through a backward reader, it reports to its mother in New York that I'm here in Africa, in Zimbabwe, being used. You remember? So if you use that currency as the benchmark of your transactions, it means the man in New York is in charge of your economy because the current is the measure of the economic activity which is going on in your country. That's what a currency is. It's a measure of the economic activity which is going on in your country. Do you want the American Reserving Federal Governor to be in charge of the measurement of your economy. One day you work very hard and overnight he says your economy is under inflation because he has printed so many US dollars and then your economy is gone. It happened in 2008. You understand? So the governor and the president and the central the government as in the, in the, in the cabinet, they are trying to say, let's find a way where our Zimbabwe dollar becomes 
part of the national currency. We have done well to date. Last year, the president issued the statutory instruments, which then uh, put to notice two major institutions of expatriation of currents out of Zimbabwe. They were old Musho and they were Ekokesh. For your own information, I was very much involved in that. At one time, I used to be with the Securities Exchange Commission of Zimbabwe as a commissioner, and my degree is finance. And I was very central to make sure that Zimbabwe domesticates its currents. That's what the president did in June last year, June 2020. You know the MDC was predicting that there will be an uprising on 31 July. They were predicting because they knew that the currency was going to collapse. And with a collapse, the currency was on the street. Because the biggest instrument of overthrowing governments in Africa is inflation. That's what the new in our agenda means. So the president saw through the agenda, and a few days before 31 July, he hit the stock exchange in old mutual implied the exchange rate. He hit Ecocash. And you know where the exchange, the, now the, the, the digital exchange for money at Ecocash, do you know where it is? It is in the Reserve Bank. Governor Mangunja is looking at it every day like this. The hanky peng which was going on at Ecocash is gone. That's why the currency has been stabilizing. Yes, it has not stabilized at the rate at which we would like, but you can say we have not gone back to 2008 with our currency. But more important, the open for business mantra, the investment in Fumfuza and all this, they are raising the production in the economy. It means investment is beginning to work, to, to work through the economy. You can't, it can't work overnight because nobody had domesticated our currency since it was removed by Cecil John Rhodes in, 19, in 1890. Nobody. Mugabe did not domesticate the currency. By the way, I don't have a fetish on Mugabe. I know him very well because I, 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 know, I knew him since I was at university in 1975. You know, you know, so I, I, I don't have a fetish on him like some G40s have. So what I'm saying is that we are building step by step, block by block, our currency to become the mainstay of the national exchange, to become the measure of our economy. Yes, the teachers have a reason. You also have a reason. But if we all go to say because we are suffering, therefore we cannot pay the price of sacrificing to make sure that our currency comes back, we forego the country. We will forego this country. It becomes a basket currency, which then makes America become the only country which runs this place. It restores the British, the American dollar as the only means, and America becomes, we become the fifth one state of the United States. We can't become the fifth one state of the United States. So, yes, that's why the government is finding other ways of dealing with the teacher issue, because nobody in this country loves teachers more than ZANU-PF government. Don't listen to all these people, their trade unions lying to you. We are the ones who created this teaching class which Africa envies. From Norway, in 1980, we were short of teachers. We sent 7,000 by air to the Isle of Wight in Cuba to train teachers. We have a Spanish teaching profession done by ZANU-PF. That's why we have the most educated population. So to try to say ZANU-PF does not like teachers, it's a lie. It's a blue lie because we created the teaching profession to the scale where Africa fishes teachers from Zimbabwe. It was not done by the MTC. It was not done by the trade unions. Definitely it was not done by the British Labour peers in London who want to say, my trade unions in Zimbabwe, I would talk about it. Kupi. So we know what depends our teachers. We know what is at issue. And it's a delicate issue. We are engaging with them. The Minister of Higher Education is engaging with them. And the Minister of Finance has made overtures. We are determined to find a way where the teaching profession gets the welfare it deserves. We will do it because it is for the safety, it is for the future of this country, because children must be educated. Nobody cares more about the education of Zimbabwean children than ZANU-PF, because it is our hallmark as a, as, 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 as a prost independent ruling party. You are talking now of uh, the, the failures which we have. Yes, there have been issues about the way the country was managed by the, second, by the First Republic, particularly in the enablers of power, water, and others at national level. 
That's why I was saying that that was a perfect opportunity for the MDC to have shown that in urban areas where they were the administering authority, they would have proven that they can do better than Mugabe and his cohorts in the G40. Unfortunately, there was an unspoken alliance between the MDC and the G40s. It exists. There's a, that's why Anakila Zivu, that's why uh, uh, some Garuras MPs are always trying to become an intercessor between ZANU PF and the G40s. Because there is an unspoken alliance between them. So sometimes the MDC is a foil for people who want to undermine ZANU PF, claiming to be associated with ZANU PF. When you, when you cook fish and you don't want to, you want to enjoy the skin, you put it in foil. The MDC is actually part of these people. So, yes, the enablers were neglected, but there's been a dramatic turnaround in the last three years. Look at the investment at Kariba. That's big. It's on. Look at the investment in Wange, in the thermal power stations. That's big. Look at the overtures which the president is giving to President Yusa about Buzi gas to build up power stations. I'm involved. I was in Baira with the president because I know the investors who are involved who are doing that. It's big. We are attracting capital on a scale which you confound Africa to address the issues which you are talking about. So you may want to be enamored to the past and say because Wagata Zalezuro, which refers to the Republic Yam Gabe. Yes, because we, you keep the revolution. We are not. The Second Republic is different. We are not Mugabe. We are not G40s and their ignorance. We are different. That's why if you travel, and I'm going to organize a tour of you to go to Chifu to see the steel plant. The company which is investing there has offered to host all of the all journalists. So I will be your, I will be your, the man who, 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 who takes you, I'll chaperone you all the way to the steel plant at Chifu, so that you see the scale of the investment which is going on there. Blessed, this is what we are doing. We are attracting capital from Fortune 500 companies into Zimbabwe. Americans and British are stampeding into Muzarabani to become part of the drilling in Muzarabani. You don't see that? You still want us to, to belabor about, about Kasukwere and Mugabe and Grace? This party has transformed. Operation Historicus is real. That's why perhaps I'm also speaking to you as the spokesman of the party. You know, another time I would not be here. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> so if, if the presence of Christopher Mchangwa as spokesman of the party does not convince you that something else has happened in ZANU PF, I don't know what will convince you. You are my friend. <laughs> Thank you so much. Another question. Very powerful, <laughs> Comrade Spokesperson, indeed. Uh, let's meet in Chivu. And uh, I saw a lot of smiles, uh, comments, uh, comments, comments, and I think it will be a good event to have. Yeah, it is going to yes, happen. I'll start with uh, my brother, whose hand was up. Then I'll come to, to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, thank you. Just to the center. Yeah, yes, yes. A bit loud. Uh, louder, louder, louder. Loud. Okay. Yeah. I expected I'm going to go from 263 times, but uh, I don't know if you allow me to ask my question. Please. Uh, I'm free. I, don't, in, in, in anything under the sky, you can ask. I have absolutely no taboos. Anything under the sky. that I told you that there is an unspoken alliance between Triple C, some MDC elements, and some people who may manifest themselves as an UPF, some including one on the gray, gray line. So they never tire to be to try to hijack Zanu PF. I have got several tweets. I wanted the other day I couldn't even speak on Twitter because all my accounts have been hacked, and they, are not in, they didn't come from my name, they didn't come from me, but they are saying Mutrang, they are not my account. So there's constant effort at sowing discord within ZANU-PF. 
and more so they were trying to say because I am new something may be happening between me <laughs> and my director he's a hard working young man he is committed patriot he enjoys the confidence of the president he has the trust of the ruling party he is doing his job fine that's why he is here and he will be here for a long time until, until if ever he wants to go because he does his job well I'm new to this department, I'm impressed by him and the way he does his things. So those who think we would make I know, my false flag operations, you know what is a false flag operation? Schools up, as I want, or Seru Scout type operations, they will not succeed. Particularly in my case, because I've got a life long experience of dealing with such kind of infiltration. So don't worry, he's fine. I'm sure you are, you are answered, although I didn't expect uh, the spokesperson clarified there's only one mouthpiece for the party. And if anything happens, he'll tell you. And you'll be the first to know after all. Yeah. So I think uh, this should be the last time the spokesperson should be bothered by those things. Yeah, don't, don't fire my staff without me knowing. Yeah. Uh, because I'm the one in charge. If the president wants something, he will come to me. Or he'll come through the party, sec the party uh, sector of administration. And I'll be told. Then I'll give you a statement. Uh, don't, 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 don't guess met, guess met me. <laughs> uh, you know, therefore, No, wait until I say it. He wasn't fired, and I, I clarified accordingly. Uh, it's just people trying to, to cause uh, destabilization within the party. We are very vigilant. And of all people, I'm alert to that because I, I saw it at the time at the battlefront. I saw it, you know, post-war. I've been in these trenches for a long time. I know what I'm talking about. So I'm very vigilant. I will not be taken for a ride by anybody who claims. And incidentally, I want that, that, that Twitter page, which, which moonlights as a, a party Twitter page. I want it. We, we must tell Twitter to remove it. Yeah, I yeah. think the processes will be put in. Yes, yes. We can't have people impositing themselves as others on Twitter. Otherwise, we will also have to sue Twitter. Or, or, but I think normally it's a corporate company. They will be responsible. They will be ever according. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, my brother. What's the name? You said, yes, what was your name, my brother? My brother, what was the name? Mungu. 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 Okay. Uh, say out your name and then uh, you ask your question. My name is Desmond Lim, Sim Life. Mm. So I'm asking about uh, campaigns and rallies for the opposition parties. ZBC being a public service broadcaster, are you going to see uh, rallies and campaigns for the opposition parties, CC, MTC, on uh, ZTV, uh, being adequately broadcasted and uh, enough capital? There's a trust. There's a trust which runs uh, the media institutions of the government of Zimbabwe. Uh, it is in papers. It's called the Mass Media Trust. The man came from Nigeria in 1980. I used to be the minister of. I am actually the first one to go into that ministry of information, post independent. So the trust is responsible for the administration of the newspapers, the Zim Papers Group. Furthermore, it is a publicly quoted company, it's on the stock exchange with shareholders. And by the way, it performs very well as a company. I don't see myself assuming the role of those two institutions, the stock exchange, which administers the Zim Papers, ANZ Group, or for that matter, the Mass Media Trust, the original Nigerian money, which came to buy the, what was called the Agas Group back to the African agenda in 1980. So corporate responsibility, corporate ethics says I shouldn't be interfering in those institutions. That's what you are trying to call me for. It's up to, if it's, it's up to Chamisa to go and sell himself there if they think that he has got a case, 
and that it just in jeopardizes their balance sheet or it makes them make money, they probably will entertain him because it is their responsibility to make money. I am inclined to believe that that is the same thing at ZBC. When I was there, we ran it as a corporate entity. There is no industry which makes as much money as broadcasting in the world because of advertising. It's a commercial industry. So if they feed, feed that covering MDC rallies makes them make money, maybe they will consider that because that is their, also their job to make money beyond entertaining, informing, and educating the public. And if they feel that the message of education from the MDC is good for the Zimbabwe people, they will also be able to broadcast it. But if your message is to say that sanctions are good for Zimbabwe, if your message is to say that ruling government, if your message is to say you get elected and you don't accept the outcome of elections, if your message is to say president, when the president goes to parliament, we walk out, this is un Zimbabwean. If your message is to say we want the security sector of Zimbabwe to be reformed, the security sector where every Zimbabwean family paid the ultimate price by sending their child to set it up, where MDC was one of us, we are going to go to the next one. Then something is wrong, you know, the, the, about your message. Then don't expect those institutions to entertain because you are bordering on the treasonable. Eh, if you are not treasonable, there's nothing wrong. The Constitution respects you. By the way, there is a station which broadcasts all over the world. It's called Voice of America. There is another station called BBC External Affairs, which broadcasts all over the world. Both of them are funded by the respective governments, the American government and the British government. BBC External Affairs, not BBC, BBC External Affairs. It is run by the Foreign Office in London. The Foreign Office is the Minister of Foreign Affairs, if you want to be I'm a diplomat, so I know what I'm talking about. Those are the people who pay the check for the BBC and Voice of America. It would be inconceivable Voice of America broadcast Studio 7. <laughs> because the other government has put him on sanctions. You understand? The American Congress would object to allocating money to Voice of America if it allows Emerson Damuzom Nangagwa, the sanctions victim, to come and speak on Voice of America on Studio 7. So I hope it answers what you ask. Yes, I thank you. More questions. The spokesperson is here with you today. Yes, my brother. The name and the surname, the, the, the table. Moyo. Can you talk loud? Don't talk to your phone. Talk to me loud. My name is Yes. So my question is, you said what is a peer policy to Yes. In 2019, the President was promised free education. Yes. Up to now, no free education. How do you feel in 2019, this paper, the free education next year? If the MDC says free education next year, I start by looking at their track record. Can you collect garbage first in the urban areas where you are administrators? Can you put sewers in, in urban areas where you are administrators? Because this is governance. You know, local governments is governments as, as, as much as, as, as national governance. They haven't done that. Those are not the ones promise the MDC. You open the Arab Wakurota Chiyama. As we did because charity begins at home. Start with the basics. Ukawana Mukadzari would never know how to farm money matumbu machena. Christmas. 
So MDC, I'm saying the track record for two decades in urban areas where they were in charge, where they were being elected by the electorate, Yavo, Mafotas, Kutitre, or Matanda, and Ugarika. Eva Taza, no Agono Pabamira. Sep was Chicago Zaga free education for the country. Ibotaga is, 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 under your purview. Why do you want national education which is not under your purview to become your ambition of achievement? Start with clearing garbage, clean, you know, cutting garbage away. Start with providing war. Start with meeting businessmen so that they invest. Can you imagine? 20 years. Havana gana one day rabati wambukai. Cut a ribbon refectory. If you ever seen a name this in me cutting Yes, you not know, got a video. I'm not going to my video, my ribbon, my factory. You will be astounded. We have one factory I was telling you the other day, Varun. Nine production lines in three years. Because I'm not going to open for business. Uka and as Nez, which end up in Buzu, which end up where Varun, Pai, 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 Uno, and Pachini Mina. Never were going to come up, and now I change the Kumabas. That's what we are doing, you understand? This is why we are saying. Amnangagwa is track record, is achievement. And Akuma, Tabu Pachika for Mozambique within three years under the World Food Program. Instead, Jim Bogaraji, the Trogaraji Pachika for the World Food Program. This is achievement. MDC, Inoti, instead, Dira Jech, because Uyaku gone. Can you imagine? In Bopemberero, Kanajako Akanika Chagone Guanemuari, eh, Kanashamari Yako, each Kunyang Munchingeran. Ikawayo yaka feka sudu ya Vagutaun because yaka enda ku university. Iyo waka sara wajiti uchifuza mombe kuruzeva. Uchida kunyenga msikana yaka kusia. Chimbo respecta uyukutaane more value to give to that girl than you. Hayako na kutaanzi nda kutu enda none isa zupikiri pa mochi kari yake ya vana ya kutaun. Nimura because haku nditorira mkazi. That's what the MTC attitude is. You know, you must be able to send a row wapana papa uyaka enda kuchukuri enda kasana chita say MDC is exactly like that. They have no record of achievement in any administrative capacity whatsoever. And incidentally, ZANU PF knows very well that I organized MDC in 2002, Warungu. So, President has reached out to Warungu. They are citizens of Zimbabwe. They have gripes about how they were treated by the British. We are also saying that you can have the global compensation for what are your grabs justified or um, we want you to be inclusive in Zimbabwe building. So the reality is that the MDC has no money. <laughs> the funders have deserted it. And the reality is that the MDC has no organizational structure because they have no record of organization other than the Evarung. Those are the people who are when they are my elections. Because we are organized and because we are offering prosperity to the people of Zimbabwe. That's why we are very confident that we can defend the currents. Young Asian foods are blessed. Because we are beginning to show that economic management can reap results, which means any more dollars to defend your currency make Zimbabwe prosperous. Go for double digit economic growth. The president is here and there and everywhere pursuing those agendas. Yes, more questions. I insist the spokesperson is not in a hurry. He is ready to be with, ye, with you until uh, the whole day when your issues have been exhausted. Any further questions? Chama Limba. Yes. Uh, spokesperson. Sandy Siraj Pikiri. Thank you. Please, okay. Thanks. Right, let's uh, move on. Any more questions? If there are no questions. Let me say to members of the media, thank you very much for gracing our occasion. A spokesperson uh, is not a mute person. He will continue to engage you on these platforms. And in him, you can see it for yourself, the path has found a voice. So always feel free to engage him any time when there are pertinent issues. Uh, if but not minors, but majors. <laughs> As long as we take each other seriously, I have yeah, no problem. Yeah. Ask anything. Uh -huh. 
I think that's all I wanted to say. But thank you very much. We will await to hear from the spokesperson. When is he going to take you on a tour to witness one of uh, the mega projects happening in our country, in our lifetime? Let us be ambassadors of uh, good things and portray our country in positivity. Negativity doesn't build all of us. So, spokesperson, I await to hear from you so that we can take our uh, guys. And also, please, uh, for those ah, that make challenges I've from got Arade, books. Mm -hmm. I've got books. Are they my... I've got more books. Mm -hmm. Let me check my guy. I promised the, some books earlier on. I'm a man of my word. Mr. Dmainda. Mkoma nongwa rukupi. Apoka. Eh. Ah, ndoda kutu. Ah, ndoda kutu. Ah, ndoda kutu. Ah, I repeat. Eh, this is my, f my, the author is my, f my, my lifelong friend. We were together at St. Augustine's Patsambe. He was very good in English. He went, went to university together in 75. I left and went to war. He followed me in 76 to war. We fought together. And he became later at Independence Director of Information and later became an ambassador. So he wrote about the war. He is as erudite as one can find of that particular period. And as the chairman of the war veterans, I am now encouraging my war veterans to write as much as possible. And that book is one of the books I am putting as an example of the literature from the war. Uh, don't worry. Baby Raganyor was 30 years just off. So we still have time for the existing veterans to write. But your parents, they fought that war, Maruzevo. Encourage them to write if they can. Or listen, put a tape recorder. Because we don't want that narrative to be lost.